Some people's idea of a vacation is going to Disney World or Italy, or if your name is Tatiana, you get flewed out to Dubai. Apparently my idea of a vacation, at least a mini vacay, is me driving my German Tonka truck nine hours from Dallas, Texas to Raton, New Mexico, to the Q Ranch to learn how to shoot still targets at not so close distances. Actually, that's a gross oversimplification of Buck Doyle's follow through consulting three day scope carving course. If I had to put it in Buck Doyle's words, I spent three days learning how to gunfight. The drive. I haven't taken a vacation in years. Honestly, I don't remember ever taking a formal vacation, but that's neither here nor there. Because of this, I was looking forward to this class the same way AOC looks forward to embarrassing herself on Instagram Live. Until today, when I got a folding chair delivered to my apartment. Over the years, I've gone from being terrified of flying to being mildly annoyed by it. So if I can avoid flying, I generally will. And plus, I now have the perfect excuse to put Betty Black on the road. Betty Black is what I call my G63, because when you love vehicles as much as I do, you name them and give them personalities they don't actually have. Me and Betty Black have been through a lot, and I plan to drive her until she explodes. Oh, and for the record, yes, I call what is obviously a SUV a truck. If you ask me why, I'll mumble some shit about it being a body on frame and some other gibberish that makes no sense. I call it a truck, and I'll continue to do so. If you feel some type of way about it, which I know someone does because it's the internet, work that shit out with your therapist. Back to the show. The drive from Dallas, Texas to Raton, New Mexico is a nine hour drive. The first half of the drive was actually beautiful. The wide open expanse of land and rolling hills was awesome. I couldn't get over how beautiful it was, honestly. But as it got dark, the night turned white, and let's just say, I don't have the best track record driving on ice so I wasn't exactly confident when it came to driving in the snow. I grew up in Houston, the hottest, most humid city on the planet, second only to this place called Miami. So the only thing I know about snow is Young Jeezy. After a few phone calls, drop pins, and cautious driving, we finally made it to the Q Ranch, which is owned by Connor and his father, Leo. The Q Ranch. The Q Ranch is massive. I'm talking Lion King, everything the light touches type of massive. The structure or multiple structures are pretty big, but the sheer mass of land was just beautifully overwhelming. It just never stopped. I look left, I look right, and it's the Q Ranch. There are animals on the wall that I've ever only seen while watching Animal Planet documentaries on Netflix, while still having every modern creature comfort you could want while in the middle of nowhere, New Mexico. It's a sort of a taxidermy graveyard meets Silicon Valley brought to you by Raytheon Company. Long story short, if I had to be in a bunker down for a long time, <laughs> this is where I'd want to be. Day one. The first day functioned as a sort of classroom introduction to what the course is all about. But before I do that, let's talk about who Buck Doyle is. Buck Doyle served over 21 years in the U.S. Marine Corps, including 12 years in multiple combat tours with Special Operations Units. As a reconnaissance Marine attached to 1st Force Recon, 1st Recon BN, and MARSOC units, Doyle served as a team leader, platoon sergeant, and chief instructor at Special Missions Training Branch. He has current, extensive experience in hostile fire combat zones in Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Doyle retired from the Marine Corps as Master Sergeant with multiple awards, including the Bronze Star, with Valor. Just so we're clear, I literally just read all of that from the About Me section on his website. In my time getting to know Buck, he is a man who understands who he is on a fundamental level. He understands his faults and his weaknesses and makes no apologies for him. For Buck, life is, well, life. He doesn't try to make things what they're not. He simply takes life for what it is, and if he can change it, he will. If not, he just adjusts accordingly. As an instructor, Buck pulls from his personal experience. When he's teaching, you can almost see the movie of that experience playing out in his head. His rants are legendary. They happen so naturally that a lot of the times, he doesn't even realize he's ranting until he's 10 minutes into the rant. But you don't really care because there are so many amazing nuggets of information in these rants that you sometimes rather hear the rant instead of shoot. And I know, it's kind of blasphemous, but it's true. Rhetorical question, how is that chilly? I'll be honest, I never really liked school. 
I love to learn, but I prefer to learn by doing. So the classroom setting for me was always painfully boring. However, that wasn't the case here. Buck teaches from his past experience and presents those experiences in a very straightforward, practical way. So the classroom setting didn't feel like pie in the sky theorizing, but more like concrete information that I can download into my brain and immediately go out and try to apply. Well, that is until he started talking about the Tremor 3 reticle. This is the Tremor 3 reticle. It looks fucking insane. It's like my T3i calculator took a shit on my optic. The first time I saw the Trimmer 3, I thought, where the hell are we going to shoot? Mars? It was easily one of the most intimidating reticles I've ever laid eyes on. And guess what? Buck loves the Trimmer 3 reticle. So much so, if your optic doesn't have a Trimmer 3 reticle, he'll give you one to borrow for the course, which is what I had to do. Here's the crazy thing. The first thing I did when I got back home from the course was buy a Leupold Mark VI with the Trimmer 3 reticle. <laughs> Once Buck started breaking down what everything meant on the reticle, it started making so much sense to the point where I started thinking, why doesn't every reticle look like this? The classroom session only lasted an hour or two. I could tell Buck rather be out shooting, but that the classroom portion was a necessary evil. So he tried to keep it as short as he can so we can get behind the gun sooner. After the classroom session, we grabbed our gear and loaded up the trucks and headed down to the site in range. Whenever you take a course like this, I tend to do what I like to call gear watching. Gear watching is basically tactical voyeurism, where you look at what everyone else brought to the course. You're seeing what bags people are running, what rifle, chest rig, shoes, jacket, glasses, watches, pants, you name it. It's not so much a sizing up as much as it is a let me see what other gear I can go blow my money on when I get back home. Trust me, packing for a course like this is an art form. And to this day, I still struggle. When it comes to zeroing my rifle, I'm one of two ways. Either I try to be so precise that I don't feel I have a zero, or I'm so loose and fast with it that I don't actually have a zero. Either way, Buck made sure that everyone was dialed in because at the distances we were gonna be shooting, no one could afford to have a loose and fast zero. After everyone was dialed in, I packed up and started our way to range one. Over the three days I was out here, I developed a new appreciation for the Tundra trucks we used to get around the property. The weather was nuts. Mud, rain, snow, ice, we got it all. And the trucks took everything we threw at them. These things are certified beast. Range 1 is where we spent a lot of time shooting at 12 inch plates at 381 meters, 435 meters, 508 meters, and 610 meters. However, before I get into all of that, let's talk about my rifle. I love this thing. It's a modern outfitter's MC7 chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. I ran a Leupold Mark 6 scope with a 45 degree offset iron sights with a proof research carbon fiber 20 inch barrel and a silencer Crimera cam. It photographs really big and looks really heavy, but it isn't at all. The lightweight proof research barrel and the lightweight Leupold Mark VI keep the weight off and makes what should be an unwieldy rifle a very wieldable beast. I can do wet, I can do snow, I can do the back of Hillary Clinton's neck dry heat and Drea Michelle wet humid heat, but I fucking hate mud. No, I'm serious. I hate mud on a clinical level. I truly fucking hate it. And there was a ton of it on this day and I was miserable. But what was I gonna do? So I just dealt with it. Range one is where we spent time getting used to using the Trimmer 3 reticle and learning how to watch what Buck calls our feedback and knowing where our shots are impacting and then making adjustments based on what we saw through the optic and the information presented to us via the Trimmer 3 reticle. Initially, I struggled. I just wasn't used to watching my feedback, so I would just launch a shot, and if I missed, pick a different spot, shoot again, and hope for the best. I'll tell you right now, that's stupid. However, as time went on, watching the feedback became more natural, and I could start making quick adjustments on the fly, depending on what the wind was doing, purely based on the Trimmer 3 reticle. I'm telling you now, once you get over the initial learning curve, you won't go back to any other reticle. Now here's the thing. 
Little did I know, my optic was ever so slightly loose on my mount, and I didn't realize it until the end of the course. I would miss and miss and miss and miss, and it was driving me crazy, along with Buck. For some reason, it never occurred to me that my mount could be loose. It was very slight, but it was loose. And when you're shooting at 12 inch targets at 600 meters, a slightly loose mount makes for massive points of deviation on target, if at all, which was the case for me. I like to think of the first day as the acclimation day. I was overwhelmed and frustrated. Prior to this course, I didn't do a lot of long range shooting, so this was a new skill set for me, and I wasn't exactly a natural. However, even with the mud and frustration, being out in the elements and learning a new skill made me happy. After range one, we loaded up and headed back to the house for the debrief. The drive back was always a reflective time for me. I wasn't driving, so I had time to sit and just reflect on everything I learned and take in how expansive the Q Ranch is. When we got back to the house, I honestly just wanted to take a shower, eat, and relax. But Buck, Buck wanted to debrief. I have to say, I actually really enjoyed the debrief though. It's here where Buck brings everything you just learned all together in the most entertaining way possible. The next day, I was an eager beaver, ready to put what I learned to the test. I was frustrated the first day, but I was sure I had it dialed in this go round. Snow, snow, snow. I have to say, I love snow. I love being in the snow, love looking at the snow, but I hated the snow plus mud. At this point, I kind of perfected my loadout. Kind of a system in a system, with a larger bag and then a smaller bag for when we actually go to the shooting positions. Now, here's the thing. I sucked at actually finding the targets we were shooting at. Everything just looked the same to me, and we weren't exactly shooting big targets. Hell, locating the targets is just as much a skill set as shooting the targets. Not gonna lie, I initially hated shooting off the barricade. I just felt that there was too much to remember. I was used to just running up to the barricade and throwing my gun up and shooting. However, with Buck, there's always a practical rhyme and reason for everything we do. So I did what he said. Now, I actually enjoy working the barricade. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that. After we worked the barricade on range two, we packed up and headed back to the house for lunch and then on to range three, where we would be doing what I love to do, moving and shooting and shooting and moving. Snow was everywhere and no mud in sight. I loved it. I loved deep snow and range three was packed with it. It's been a while since I took this course and I have to say that it's kind of painful to watch. I was a clumsy mess compared to how I am now, but trust me, on the inside, I was screaming, Wee! this is fun, while huffing and puffing all at the same time. I know for a lot of people, the idea of being out in the elements and laying in the snow and in the mud and getting rained on isn't really considered a vacation. But for someone that has a passion for firearms and shooting in the Second Amendment the way that I do, it very much is a vacation. Now, at the same time, all of the things that I learned and then being able to immediately apply them, that to me is an experience that not many people get to have, especially being able to shoot out to the distances that we were shooting at and to literally walk away from a course with a whole new skill set. I'm sorry, but that is worth its weight in gold. Other than that, it felt great. The altitude gets you though, especially on this last one coming up here. I was like, ooh, I don't know about this one. I was perturbed. <laughs> Remember, kids, keep your bipods long. Especially when you're shooting in the snow. I'm gonna do it again. Real quick before you go. If you're anything like me, after watching a video like this, you probably wanna know about some of the clothes, gear, and guns in this video and where to get them. Well, if you hit the description section of this video, you may find a list with links to a lot of the gear used in this video. 15 years ago, I fell in love with guns in large part because of the online gun community on platforms like YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Unfortunately today, 
These platforms use algorithms to limit the reach of gun videos like this one. But there is a way to beat the algorithm, and that's by sharing. Let's motivate more people to fall in love with the Second Amendment like I did 15 years ago by sharing the hell out of this video and other videos like it. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like or heart this video, and leave a comment. Also, if you're wondering where you can pick up your state-specific Keep America Tactical shirts, there's also a link for that in the description section of this video.